Now we're going to talk, we're going to take a turn and we're going to talk a little bit about sustainability. And um, Erickson just published a report called Breaking the Energy Curve. And what I like about this report is this is, a, you know, we're seeing more and more of this and, and Erickson is planting a flag in the sustainability space. And they're saying that they believe that it's possible to quadruple data traffic without increasing energy consumption. And more importantly, that it, they believe that it's an industry responsibility to do just that. And um, I thought it was really interesting. I had a chance to dive into the report. I know you did as well. Um, they lay out in the report the company's approach to breaking the energy curve, which is you know increasing energy consumption and mobile networks. Um, they've tested some 5G deployments. They've applied what they call their holistic approach hypothesis to see what kind of results they could uh, they could find. Um, and this approach of theirs is comprised of four elements. And these include preparing the network, and that's all about modernizing and improving the network, replacing old, old equipment with future-proof hardware. You know, of course, this is a foundational move, right? And, and in my opinion, and, and I believe Erickson's opinion as well, this should be done first. Um, you know, moving away from keeping old equipment is, is, um, you know, not the best path forward. It's like, you know, modernizing in low traffic areas can yield a payback of less than three years in energy savings alone. And so my, my point here when I say is keeping old equipment um, is, is not the path forward as it relates to sustainability. And that doesn't necessarily mean you need to, you know, rip and replace from the get-go, but having a conversation, diving in and looking at what your system, what your operations are today, what your equipment looks like today, what your plan is for modernizing that equipment, I think is really important. And it is a foundational part of business strategy. Um, another part of their foundation, their foundation, four elements here is building 5G with precision. And that's, you know, makes perfect sense. It's the right equipment, uh, in the right place at the right time, optimizing your network performance, keeping CapEx and OpEx within set limits. And done correctly, Erickson claims that CSPs can limit energy consumption growth when they're introducing 5G solutions. So that's really important as well. Another part of, you know, one of the four foundational elements here is using energy saving software and making, you know, this is common sense, right? Making software purchase decisions based on energy efficiency See, it's smart business these days. Of course, you know, Ericsson touts its 5G software, which has energy savings built into its RAN network. Um, Ericsson also suggests adding machine learning and low energy scheduling solutions and things like micro sleep offering, which they claim can reduce radio equipment energy consumption up to 15%. But, and the key there is that you can reduce energy consumption, but still deliver on customer experience and user experience front. So I think that's super important. And then the last of the four is intelligent site infrastructure operations. And AI, of course, is a big part today of any intelligent operations. Ericsson approach and formula recommends integrating AI into site infrastructure operations. And, and they claim that customers and service providers have been able to reduce site energy consumption by up to 15% using intelligent site control solutions. So the, the report does a good job of breaking down challenges that operators face and highlighting solutions and customer use cases demonstrating the impact that Ericsson has been able to accomplish in terms of energy savings. I'll link the report in our show notes. Ron, I know you likewise took a dive into the report. What were your key takeaways there? No, oh, I think uh, you really hit the major points, Shelley. And one thing that I think uh, made a strong impression is the emphasis on the holistic approach. Right. And it seems intuitive uh, that, oh, yeah, naturally an operator should take a holistic approach to really right. you know, improve their clean energy credentials, boost their sustainability uh, ratings and so forth. However, it's a little easier said than done. Uh, there is still, you know, it the is. silo <laughs> aspect, <laughs> exactly, right. and and you know, I think uh, most folks can understand that. And but I think the point is, is that you know, with five G networks, uh, we are definitely 
looking at opportunities to really break through, you know, that energy curve as uh, Erickson eloquently right. described it. That is avoiding the treadmill. It's like, oh, great. You know, we gain energy conservation in one domain of the network, but the other domains haven't followed suit. So even though we're right. scaling more traffic, we're not really getting, you know, any energy efficiency breakthroughs that accompany with it. And that's a challenge that's been going on, for example, in the data center realm. Right. I think it's different here is that, yes, you know, uh, 5G has, I think, well understood standards that are driving uh, its implementation in many key areas. That's not to say there's plenty of work to be done there, that we're really striving for, for example, an open 5G network environment and ecosystem. And, uh, for example, OpenRAN is a great place uh, where that could happen. However, you know, each operator has their own specific requirements. And so, you know, regardless of how they evolve uh, their uh, network, they have to keep in mind, okay, we're getting energy conservation in the RAN domain, but we also have to do the core domain and the transport uh, domain and the edge computing domain and so forth, and making right. sure that everything is firing in all cylinders or firing on the common EV battery, however you want to make uh, the apt analogy as to how this can really be done. And I think it's important. And I think what's uh, very encouraging is that uh, the report, uh, you know, pointed to examples uh, where this is happening. For example, Ericsson's working with Deutsche Telekom and using uh, solar uh, panels and uh, solar uh, farms, uh, the network site itself, to achieve, you know, some of these energy breakthroughs. And you know, I think that's a good starting point. Today, we know that solar energy is not going to be ready across the board, uh, but wherever it can be used to you know, diversify energy sources and prove you know, what uh, ways can be uh, done to make it even better, that right. I think was uh, good for you know, the entire 5G ecosystem, let alone you know, across uh, the global economy. And also to your point, you know, uh, Ericsson's been uh, working with Vodafone UK and they had uh, that uh, demo in London that showed that their uh, RAN implementations, specifically the air technology, can deliver that fourfold uh, or at least a 43 percent. Let me rephrase that 43 percent energy savings right. across the entire radio implementation. That's, That's even lot. better during peak <laughs> time. So, <Right>. yeah. <laughs> so we're, we're seeing, you know, th that these are you know tangible uh, possibilities. And once they are implemented, that there will be, you know, these uh, positive gains in terms of energy efficiency and, again, breaking, uh, you know, the energy barrier so uh, uh, the operators can scale confidently and also have actual tangible energy savings in the, in the process as well. And, uh, right. you know, just being on that treadmill. So, yeah, uh, this is, I, I think, an important report. And it's definitely yeah. driving, you know, our research on 5G sustainability and right. why that's going to become even more critical in understanding uh, 5G network uh, builds and 5G decision making across the board. Yeah, and I think that, you know, there are key benefits. I mean, you know, of course, there are key benefits for Ericsson to produce research like this, right? Of course, they want, you know, customers to be attracted to that and to them. Um, the, the very real benefits here for service providers, though, are, you know, all about managing traffic growth, reducing costs, and being a technology leader and reducing their environmental footprints. And those are things that all resonate with customers today too, right? So I think that, you know, being able to talk that talk and walk that walk from a CSP standpoint is very important as well. So again, as I said, I'll link the, I'll link the full report into um, the show notes here. So if you want to take a look at it, um, again, it's Ericsson's Breaking the Energy Curve report, and it's definitely worth your time to check out. 